Hello, this is Craig, and I'm back in the lab this evening with my Charm High T48VA, and I'm assembling this board. This is a board I'm calling Tex. It's a design I did for a static airplane display at a museum in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's actually a B-52, uh, vintage from uh, Vietnam era. Uh, this particular board will control all the lights as well as uh, some other functionality that the plane requires to make it, uh, you know, actually light up and be uh, realistic for the museum down there. This is a Raspberry Pi hat or a shield. It's got 211 parts on it. The complete design is over on my GitHub page. And uh, I'll have those, the, the link to that down in the show notes. I did do a lot of infrastructure build out here to support this over the last three days or so. So I'm ready to actually build the part, to build the board. I uh, got all the parts uh, loaded in here on both reels and um, tape. I have the stencil machine ready to go. I have the solder uh, warmed up <laughs> and I have my squeegee and I'm ready. So uh, here we go. I'll talk a little bit about the infrastructure. We'll show you the, uh, the solder paste um, machine and uh, then we'll start assembling this board. All right. <clears throat> Let's get to it. All right, well, here's my setup. You know, you can see I have a lot of parts in here, and it turns out, you know, you got to have the overhead light off in order for the pickup head to work right, but it's really dark, so I added in this extra light. It's an LED light that I got for about $20 at Home Depot. And I set it such that when the pick head comes over the camera, it casts a shadow onto the up camera so that the um, optical uh, centering works correctly. Then over here I have a um, all my parts that I have, all the spare parts that I don't, that uh, the common parts are on these um, spindles that were made out of old CDs and each um, each thing has a label with part number, the description, and a barcode. And we'll go over here and talk a little bit about what we did over here. So the up camera, I just a little dust dust cover on it. So if we go down here, I have a few really wide parts up there on top. Those are uh, in-channel MOSFETs. Uh, and there's about 10 different parts on this thing. And for the tape extenders, I didn't buy I bought some of this uh, Pro Stripe down at the hardware at the car parts place, and it's quarter inch, and it fits right on there. And so I just put those on, and they worked okay. I went ahead and numbered all the slots here, but uh, I'm gonna have to redo that because once you get the tape in there, you can't see what number you're on. This is the bulk tray here, starting at uh, number 60. For the feeder and then there's a scrap area over there and then down here i have some um, strip tape there's a platform i cut out of a piece of plastic on my cnc machine and i'm using this uh, double-sided tape from scotch to hold the tape down and the thing that's important is you can't have the this tape height be higher than the board otherwise you have a collision some parts are really high so I uh, cut some grooves in here of different widths to hold the parts in there and I 3D printed a, like a spacer so that this part sits off of these uh, linear rails. And it's, uh, you know, it's plastic so I can just write on there what I have in there and what I have in the, this machine run here is a, a Juki 504 and a 505. You can see they're different nozzle uh, diameters. Here's the board that I'm going to work. This is the text board. Like I said, it's 100 millimeters by 200 millimeters, so a fairly large board. And in order to clean it, I'm using 96% uh, alcohol um, wipes here that I got. And we'll move over to the stencil. Here's the stencil setup. That um, the stencil. Uh, cost me about forty dollars. I got that at JLC PCB, and uh, you know the little frame. I did a, a still video on on that frame, and I got the alignment to look pretty well. We'll go ahead and talk about that here. So I have a board in here. I'll show you that in a minute. 
well right here I guess um, so I have these corner things to register the board and I 3d printed these and uh, they're one millimeter high so I can put a 1.6 millimeter thick board in there and get it get it put down right and it's a little tricky getting this alignment to be right but it works out it's gonna be great and the um, stencil the stencil uh, holder has a, the ability to move the board in small amounts by turning some this thumb screw at the front. This moves the board front and back. And then these side ones will give it a uh, side to side rotation as well as a rotation. I'm going to use this uh, Chip Quick um, 6337 No Clean Solder Paste. It's a brand new jar. And I found these down at Home Depot for my squeegee. These are just regular putty knives, and they are um, they're flexible ones. They're not the stiff ones. And these are for you know if you want to do a little bit of cleanup or a smaller board. But then I found this thing here. This is called a painter's tape knife, and um, I'm going to take the edge off with this 400 grit sandpaper. And so with this thing, it's six inches wide, so I can do this whole board this way. And there's a metal lip across the top, so I'll, I'll get a really pretty good uh, force placement. And if I wanted to run it this way, it's not, it, it's, I can run it this way as well. It, it fits in the stencil frame just fine. So here it is, this is my solder paste stencil dispenser. So I had to straighten out a few parts, uh, probably about 15. I just used some tweezers and put them back on the pads. There's a little tiny three, to, uh, three terminal uh, transistor. I think it's a TO252 that it almost all those ones, well, the majority of those ones were off. Um, so I may have to come in here and slow the speed down when it puts it down. But other than that, it placed everything really well. I mean, I think if I just popped it in the oven, we'll see where it ends up going. Um, I think probably 95, 98% of these parts will be soldered down. Alright, well let's go do that. 
when I popped the board out, there's a there was a problem. Uh, these are small single diodes, uh, 4148s, and this particular design uses about six of them, but it blew through like 30 of them for some reason, and I think that has to do with it had problems picking up the diode out of the uh, container, and it tries three times before it it uh, it throws an alarm. So I think what ended up happening was I blew through all these ones. And there's a ton of little trans uh, little diodes and resistors down in here, uh, so that's a problem. <clears throat> I'll have to uh, figure out what I'm doing wrong there. So it went pretty well. Uh, there was problems along the way, but the machine stops in the middle and lets you fix those. And most of it had to deal with uh, pulling a, the uh, the cover tape off. So the my ad hoc approach to uh, doing these tape dispensers using uh, paint striping uh, it's okay it's just okay the uh, board looks great um, if I look at this you know I'd say maybe 10 parts are kind of skewed and it turns out that my my little my old convic my old uh, convection toaster oven I was using has a heat gradient and I didn't notice that and I also put down boards old circuit boards underneath here to distribute the heat pretty well and that changed the uh, profile of the machine of the uh, oven so I had to cook it a little bit longer which is fine um, but other than that I got some I got some uh, diodes to fix which kind of blows I mean I can heat these up and kind of rotate them with some tweezers but I'm at the point now where it's like why would I do that I have a machine to do that for me pull the old diodes off clean up the board with some solder wick stick it back in and have it put them on there <laughs> yeah this is great so there is one tiny little part on here um, I'm gonna show you this board right now I don't know if it's gonna focus or not we'll we'll see here we'll see if this is gonna focus or not let's see if I can get this guy so there's one little tiny part right here this is a TI 80D converter it's a 1015 I think it's like a 12-bit 80D converter it's a super small package I don't know off the top of my head but there is a solder bridge on this but other than that I mean it just put down these parts like a madman and uh, I did you know I might have been how much solder I got in or how I worked the stencil I mean this is this is my first real board that I used the stencil on I used uh, solder paste I used my squeegee put it in my machine this is a this is a first one so um, at this point I'm very happy that I, I got this working this evening uh, it it put down these 211 parts probably well with all the problems if I take the problems out probably 10 minutes maybe and it would take me at least four hours to do this okay well I'm gonna go check this board out and um, See if there's any problems it's the first time i powered it up and i'll fix those and then i'll come in and make a few more of these because i'm on a time schedule to get these delivered uh well thanks for watching